one thing that really captured me that it relates to your point, Kathy, is um, imagining realities. Um, the way we all attach meaning with certain things, like Kelvin said, we attach meaning onto this landmass, and that's it. So something that's always interested me is the term British. And it's a concept which means so many different things to so many different people. So for some people, British might mean being white. Being British might mean being multicultural. I mean, to certain people, being British means upper class, English, polite, right? Uh, so it's quite interesting, because my nan, when she moved over from um, Jamaica to Britain, before she left Jamaica, I just got on, on the wind rush, she considers her, herself British because she was part of the Commonwealth. She came to Britain, and then over the years, she became Jamaican because she realised she wasn't British. And it's quite interesting how we imagine our identities. Um, and that's something I kind of look at in my poetry. Um, so before I go on to anything that kind of relates to the theme, I'd like to see one of my, my favourite pieces, uh, which is called Politics of the Pounties. Because um, I always find it difficult to talk about uh, what class is unless I'm looking at the social hierarchy of flowers. So. <laughs> I've been thinking back about places I've visited and I've got this one estate in mind. It's the first time I've realised that hood mentality is just a state of mind. Nobody there really cares about the daily grind as long as they're smoking on their daily grind. Dandelions grow in the gardens when they could have been roses. You could have heard the birds if it weren't for the mopeds. You could have had progress if it weren't for the posers, but that's the difference between dandelions and roses. It's a bit like people. You see, for a rose to grow, it needs care and love, but dandelions grow up around hoes and thugs. They grow up through the pavements of our inner cities. When I was younger, I used to look down and think they were pretty, but as I got older, I started looking down on them with pity. You see, in class, we're taught that dandelions are weeds, so they don't do so well in the school. Their aesthetic appearance is the only reason we consider them fools, but they hear this too, so they stop following the rules. You always hear them say, if they don't respect me, why should I respect them? Just because I look different doesn't mean I'm not as good as any of these rose tipping man though. I still got value and I still got flowers, so why don't you allow us? Because not looking at the bigger pictures, just playing cowardice. If you smoothed out the pain with some funded urban development, I'd look just like the roses and you'd feel far less benevolent. Now the roses look down at the dandelions and they laugh. They call them silly. They haven't got to worry about this shit if they're hanging out with their lilies. But, <laughs> but let's not pretend. Um, roses grow up disparity too. And let's not pretend just because they're young, they don't understand classism as a reality. If you smooth out the pain, the pain is a funded urban development on it, just like the roses before far less than ever. The roses look down at the dandelions and they laugh and they call them silly. They haven't got to worry about this shit if they're hanging out with their lilies. But let's not pretend just because they're young they don't understand classes and their everyday reality. They grow up in the suburbs and the gardens and most of them are just younger clippings of their mothers and fathers. They grow up right next to them in their picket fence paradise that people looking down admiring them most of their life. Now, back on the estate. The government gives the dandelions drugs and pesticides, believe and that's where societal problems reside. And the dandelions rarely open their eyes, they just sniff up the nutrients from the pills and the lights. The dandelions have to grow up quickly, and it's not because they're driven. They're just dealing with a hard situation which they've been given. And many of them have to grow up alone, and it's really hard to see from where the seeds are sown, which is kind of the same as kids growing up in a broken home. They're the same as the roses, just looking for the light to fall too close to the rope. That they're born too close to the picket fences, the more likely to get picked. Too close to the rope, the more likely to get nicked. Doesn't matter where they are though, they're all more likely to get kicked. So most of them look pretty bad than bruised by age 26. You don't have to be a professional botanist to realise that the problem with our pseudo-populists is getting so bad to shock that nobody's stopping this. Maybe even our politicians get off on this, looking down at the people with the wrong end of the binoculars. The issue is, the beauty of the flower is how we determine work, but we never stop to think about the quality of the eye. Thank you very much. The university used to be the promise of knowledge, but that became secondary to the pursuit of profit. Lecturers are motivated by paychecks rather than you, and that's why they don't really care if you graduate with 2-2 two, because two, they just raise the tuition fees to like 9.2. Too many online lectures and not enough one-on-one -on -one to professors, so I'm sharing my halls with 22-year-old freshers who only care for the session. So they don't feel the pressure when they're told that uni is for more than just leisure. But to be fair, why shouldn't it be? I could travel around the whole world for like half my tuition fee. They tell you to follow your dreams before telling you to get realistic by the end of year three. So you're overqualified for this and underqualified for that to try entry level schemes at the bottom of the rank. And people laugh at what I say like I'm trying to be funny, but if my education is a product, I want value for money. If my lecturer skips class, I don't want an email to be read, I want money back or reimbursement instead. Because if I skip class, I get marked down with red, even though I'm learning more, just reading in bed. Get like five hours a week because I'm in third year. I call that getting ripped off, they call that independent learning. University is supposed to be where you stop being a sheep, but I still feel stuck in the herd, feeling outspoken only because my ideas aren't being heard. Honestly, if I got marked for my ideas, then I'd get a first, but if I didn't reference others, I'd only get a third. That's because university is a market. 
As soon as you enroll, delete it just another target. That's why nightclub owners are laughing because alcohol is the recipient of your maintenance load, which you spray away on blow to distract you from the woes of not really knowing where you're going. And for many of us, we feel quite alone because we're missing home, but why should we? You're only 18 years old and you've been tricked and convinced that having a degree is golden. Why would you disagree with what you've been told? You've been listening to teachers since you were four years old. You, like I, have no idea about the reality of this nation. We think our place in society is on school registration. Yeah, we can all write essays but can't hold conversations, so we're all victims of academic inflation. Because we, we would have been content with our GCSEs, but they said to get a job, then you need a degree, so now I'm 50k in debt at university. Which is basically another system of slavery, that to do well realistically, you have to owe money to loans companies. Or at least that's what you're led to believe by big businesses selling the idea of graduate schemes, so instead of following our passions, we give in and follow the fashion of hoping and praying on a UCAS application. And if we get in, with all this elation for the work we put in, all the time that we waited, three years later you look back upon all the time that you wasted. Now, I'm not telling you don't go to university, I'm just asking you before you do. So what degree is a degree the key to unlocking your dreams? Because so many of us were taught to have chasing our dreams by teachers telling us that they are obscene, they say I love your ambition, but it's just a dream. You do much better if you go and get a degree. Thank you very much. This city has its own vocabulary, where the root meaning of failure is to succeed and ambition is nothing but a synonym for greed. I'm not sure if you agree, but the language of this city isn't written in words, it's in the way that you talk or the way that you're heard, seen in the way that you walk or judged in the way that you're learned. The language of this city is written like a melody with the saddest of lyrics, look. We sing the chorus together like an exoteric book, but the rest of the verse is easily forgotten. The chorus is the only thing we have in common. But you can find interpretations. Graffitied in the tunnels of Waterloo Station. The Saturday night sounds of Shoreditch offer their narration that the language of this place is changing. This space that we live in has increasingly less choice, so I write poetry because the only thing I can use for free is my voice. And I've still got to pay for you to hear me. Living in a world where conversation's not free because I've got to spend £40 a month to stay on my 4G. This city listens in the same way as those grade 6 turn blue and my mind races whilst I think. Whilst this city, this city thinks of words as I do too, so why can't a city reply? Because at this point in the year, a lot of people are talking about different issues, but we're not acknowledging one major source of the truth. Nobody's listening to what our young dons are listening to, and it might be because the issues aren't relatable for you. If you listen to the music coming out of the trap, you realise that people don't have a platform to talk, the only way you hear them is if they rap. And the government keeps blaming age-old problems, bringing it down to black, but you can analyse the situation without bringing it down to that. In 2018, there's been lots of violence. Loads of kids have been stabbed. That's got middle-class society panicking, going mad, looking for a logical explanation for why our kids are turning out so bad, but they're not offering that explanation. So let me try. Most people in this city are preoccupied with only getting by whilst our leaders are stuck in a bubble so they never hear the cracks. They pass off every issue as a result of gang culture, but they never explain why. So, what is a gang? Is a gang a business with a product to shove, or is a gang a group of people belonging to a certain class? Let's explore the former description. An illicit business normally selling drugs without prescription, serving the demand of a hedonistic system, so can one business be blamed for profiting from capitalism? Now, the second description is full of ambiguities. Right now, young people are living at the mercy of opportunity. Stuck in a cycle of violence and crime in underfunded communities and abandoned at a young age, long before maturity. Whether a gang is an organised entity, or just a group of kids trying to survive at the edge of this divided city, then surely it's a social issue, and the government has responsibility, theoretically. Not even theoretically, our government has accountability. Every victim of gang culture is a victim of society, but calling something gang-related allows deniability. It's not the first time this has happened, just look back through history. We're all products of our environment, but we're not representatives of it. So why should you share the same indictments as a couple of men Thank you. When I was younger, I just wanted to be normal. And that was my biggest priority. But we were poorer than normal, and of course I was a minority. So becoming normal for me meant just being part of the majority, but everyone else's parents were normal. And mine did choreography. And that's wicked, I know, but in the place where I grew up, it was always harder because when everyone spent their weekends with their parents, I was normally missing a father. My parents wanted me to do dance too, ballet or tap, and I thought to fit in, then I should probably rather want to play football in the park or listen to Linkin Park or pretend the other kids on the playground didn't call me half-caste or hide and play sight and cut my afro down low. 
speak the Queen's English like everybody I know. I used to win every race on the athletics track until I learned to run slow. Because every time I won, they said the only reason you did is because you're black and they ignored the fact that I spent 10,000 hours training on that track. They called me black until I tried to rap and then they said you're not black enough because you speak white and your skin's light and you studied too much. Eventually I realised that being normal meant being white but deep down I knew that wasn't right but I didn't have any black people to tell me that in my life so I constructed my identity as half white and half stereotype. Feeling excluded from white society is the perpetual other than looking in the eyes of another black person not understanding one another. Looking into the eyes of my own mother and realising we're not the same ethnicity as one another. It's like F4 Hurstons. It's hard being British, especially when you're British. Three generations deep and people still ask where I'm from. And I usually say British, but maybe I'm wrong. Because I know I'm a little bit Scottish and maybe a little bit Greek. My grandparents came from Jamaica, but my granddad looked like a Sikh. He came from Cuba, so it must have been kind of peak. And they all came on those slave ships, so I don't know where the fuck they came from. There's my petty identity crisis to some light. I always get the feeling that there's something about being mixed race in Britain which makes you feel like you're not. Right. Understanding your identity only comes after you understand your own mind. And I don't understand mine. But it doesn't mean I'm not trying. And maybe I will. But until then, I will leave this poem not finished. I've been the Thank you very much.